What's up, motherfuckers? Let's get into this shit. Starting off, we have the basic command line script made up of an isL down variable used for making sure the toggle for the command line only runs once, some paths to some enemy directories and item directories, and a line edit ref that references a line edit node in the scene tree. All the directory variables relate to directories in our project as shown here, such as the enemy or the item directories. I'll go more into detail on this as the video goes on, but basically we pass in the enemy directory to this function right here, the spawn entity one, and then we pass in a value which is like the scene that we want to spawn, and then we just like spawn it based on that path and the scene. So that's about all you need to know for now. And here's the no clip and the fly functions. Basically they just set the player to no clip and they set the player to fly. And uh, the player ref is this a global variable that we have that's just like a reference to the player variable just so that everything could grab it and knows and we know exactly what we're grabbing. And the line edit ref just references this part in the scene tree right here. Boom. It obtains the reference in ready right here. This helps us because if it changes in the scene tree, all we have to do is just change it in the ready function. So we have our input too. So all the input does is it um, we have a key called command line, the command line key, and this is called quote left, which is just the tilde key. And this is a, if we press that key and it's not held down. So if we're not holding it and we press that key, then it'll call this. So it basically calls this one time. We toggle the visibility, change the mouse mode based on that visibility, and set line edit ref to grab focus if the command line is active or visible. Line edit text entered will act as our main function of the scene. It is called when the user presses enter after typing a command. We will call run command at the end of it, which is a separate function that will run commands based off an enum that will write at the top of the script. In the commands enum, each command will correspond to a different string that the user could enter. So enemy, item, trigger, whatever, you could uh, type in whatever and then the command will be here. So you may have different commands for your game. For this game, I'm gonna have item, enemy, no clip, and trigger, and also fly. So flying means that you will fly through the sky, but you will collide. No clip means you'll fly around, but you won't collide. And all the other stuff just spawns different things based on the directory passed in. First, we wanna take out all the spaces on the left and right of the text that the user entered. All that will be left is a command and a value that we can parse much more easily without the spaces. We will accomplish this by using the lstrip function and then calling the rstrip function on the string that is returned from lstrip. This will format the string in the way we want without spaces on the left and right of the string. The resulting string would have no spaces on the right, no spaces on the left, just like shown here. Okay, so next we need to find the first space and put it into a variable. So I'm gonna have a variable called first space and then uh, have it be of type int, and then we're just gonna say text.find, and then find the first space. Okay, because that's what that will do. I'll just find whatever the first space is, and next space for now will also be of type int, but we're just gonna set that motherfucking shit to zero. Okay, so we're gonna make a command string, make it a type string, and declare a value string, make it a type string, and we're just declaring those, we're not setting them right now. Now let's check them off on this list. I just wanna make sure I go through everything I wanted to go through with you guys. Next, we're gonna check if first space is equal to negative one because that'll tell us if a space was actually found. And then we're uh, else, we're gonna do something else. So basically, if we have not found a space, then we're just gonna give command the entire text, just all the string. Because this means after the L strip and the R strip, all we have left is this is a command. So we're running something like no clip or fly. Otherwise, we're running something more like an item or an enemy spawn. If we are running something like a spawn that needs a command and a value, then we just want to get the first part of the string from zero to the space. So that's what we're going to do. And then value, we'll just get the rest of it. So what we'll do is we'll just give value the rest of the string and then L strip it just in case it has any spaces on the left. So by this point, we'd have a string like item gold and then we want to get from the I to the space and then give that to command, and then get from the space to the end, and then give that to value. So we're separating the two values, or the two uh, parts of the string into two different strings, and then passing it in to run command afterwards. So when we run the command, we want to have some type of match statement. So let's have it based off the command, and let's have like, uh, based on the names up here, 
In the run command function, we'll match the command passed into one of the strings shown here, and this will call one of the functions that we have below to the case statements. And right here, as you can see, I put command.2 lower in the match statement, so that way we don't pay attention to case. And if the command does not exist, we'll just pass a string to the text variable to saying cannot parse this command. And then now, all we gotta do is just um, use these paths that we have up here. And we have our enemy item and trigger directory. So let's make another one. I almost forgot, trigger. So basically, if we have a trigger right here, trigger, pass. Okay, that's our trigger directory. This is our enemy directory. This is our item directory. So that's what we're gonna pass in. The nice part about defining a spawning method in this way is that all we have to do is just pass in the value and the directory, and then we could just keep reusing the same function. So we could just use the same function for all three spawning types. So for items, enemies, and triggers, and we just pass in a different directory each time, and that way we'll know we're spawning the correct thing. And here we'll just call no clip, the no clip function, and here we'll call the fly function. Okay, so what the spawn entity does, First, it starts off a directory and a file. This is just so we can check if the directory exists. If the directory exists, then it's good, all good. We could check the next part. If the file exists, then it's all good. We could go to the next part. And basically, the um, so if if the directory does not exist, it'll print out this like error message and it'll return. And then if the file doesn't exist, then it'll print out this error message, and then it'll return afterwards. So that way we actually know what's going on. The player actually knows what's going on. They know we could not find this motherfucking shit. And right here, we should also have a return. So then we're just going to load that path, and then instance it, and then give it to this entity. And then we'll give it to the main scene. We'll add it as a child to the main scene right here. And then we'll uh, set the global transform to the player's global transform, which we have in globals. And then we have a reference to the player. Then we call this global transform then origin and give it to the entity's global transform origin. A good idea for error messages when incorrect messages are entered is to return command from run command if everything was entered correctly or return an empty string if it wasn't. If the value returned is not an empty string from run command, then we will clear the command line edit box by just giving it an empty string. Else we'll display an error on the message that will be cleared by a timer as will be shown right now. Here we're gonna add a timer, call it clear timer, and then set the wait time to three seconds and set one shot to true. Next we're gonna create a bad message function that will set a line edit.txt to some error message and then we'll call start on the clear timer. We'll pass in the error text and a time variable to set how long we want the text to display. We'll make an export variable and default the time parameter value to that, unless some other value is passed into the function. We'll set the wait time at first to the clear time, which is the export variable, and then also default the time to a clear time as well. Just remember that if you pass in a float value to start, then it will reset the wait time of that timer. Now just don't forget to connect the timeout to the clear text function. Basically I made a clear text function that all it does is just sets the line edit to nothing. And a bad message function, just make sure to replace all of your bad messages with it. So anytime where we have like the line edit.txt equals to this thing, just replace it with bad message and just pass in that string. And yeah, and now we got everything we need. And since this is connected, it will clear that text. And then we're always calling this no matter what for bad messages. You might also want to do that for good messages too, but for now, let's just say fuck it and just like only set it to bad messages. So good messages, if you type in everything correctly, it should just be an empty string afterwards in the line edit box. Okay, so if you notice, if you ran the script so far, you'll notice that it enters a quote left key every time, which is a key under tilde. This is a bit annoying, but uh, it's kind of a stupid way to do it, but fuck it, this is one way to do it, is to uh, every time you enter in text, you need to make sure that um, if new text, Oh, we need to make sure it's of type string. Okay, the rest of it will complete. That, um, find, and we find the till key. If that is not equal to negative one, that means it exists in there. So that means we also want to replace um, everything with the till key with the empty string. So that way it doesn't keep doing it. So let's see, uh, we're gonna have to um, set the line, edit.ref, and dot text. I mean, 
is equal to that, and boom. Let's see. There we have that, and it's off now. Okay, so this just runs every time we press a key, which is why I find it a little dumb. So that means it's gonna run through the whole string and search for this, and then set, and then like re replace everything with that. But yeah, so if there's a way around that, then that's a good thing to find out. Okay, so let's try some of the commands. Right now we have we could uh, spawn a pistol. Let's try that. This thing is called pistol pickup. And now we have a pistol, and we just spawn that out of midair. Let's see if we can spawn gold. Say gold. We've just spawned gold. And um, let's go uh, enemy alien. We just spawn an enemy, I think. It's easier to tell when you're in no clip. Let's type in no clip. So now you're in the middle of the air. And let's say enemy alien. Enemy alien. And we are spawning aliens. Okay. So now we're able to spawn all our items and everything. Let's try out fly. Maybe let's start over and then start try out fly. Say fly. Now we're able to fly around, but we still collide into shit. And bam! That's pretty motherfucking nice. And we still could pick up gold. It's almost like cheating just doing it like this. But it's also kind of fun in its own way. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's pretty motherfucking nice that we could do it. And yeah. So I hope you have a good motherfucking day. And I hope this helped you out in your project with making command lines. Fuck these motherfucking aliens. They could suck my motherfucking 